Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your burning question spread. This is Into the Infinite. I'm Charlie. And as always, I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> so we are diving into this new spread that I'm trying out. Uh, timeless. I wanted to add some timeless guidance to the channel um, for you. Uh, from my creative collective for Taurians, this is your reading. So the, the creative question we've got is where is your creative inspiration hiding? Such a compelling question and one that allows us to dive a bit deep. So I'm very excited for that. Um, now I am going to begin. So uh, I would like to invite the angels, my guardian angel, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Amazing. So I'm just going to have a sip of my gigantic water here. You can kind of see the top of it. <laughs> All right, Taurus, let's see what we've got here, okay? So we're going to start with the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle. Love this deck so much. Spirit, can I get some guidance about where my Taurian's inspiration is hiding? 10,000 angels lean on your circle of supernatural support. So it could be that what I'm getting here is that there's like divine things like divine timing or divine elements at work here that you may not have expected and that may not be what like you may not be seeing the forest for the trees, so to speak, Taurus. Um, I'm going to use the I'm kind of mixing it up a little bit. Well, why don't I do this? I'll clarify with the traditional Rider weight tarot and then I'll clarify on the clarification because why not? <laughs> Um, it's starting to turn into some inception stuff here. <laughs> uh, spirit, can I get some clarification for my Taurians about their, um, their creative inspiration, where it's hiding and the things that may help move them forward on different projects or creative inspiration in the way of love, deep diving, juicy, emotionally fulfilling love. Mm, so good. I mean, that's emotional fulfillment for you. <laughs> two, two, two on the time. Somebody's starting something new. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Uh, it feels like there is some new coming on in. Hmm. I'm getting that there's like the, the details of the question are in, um, how you're balancing yourself and your emotions relative to how you want others to see you. So the way that I put this spread together after um, meditating on it and really sinking into the way that I wanted it to feel for others was, um, you know, that this is kind of the energy you're bringing in and then the details of the question alongside the answer that you really want, the guidance, and then like uh, the, what you need to release and then the overall guidance. So, um, I'm almost getting that like you want this like there's like this public facing version of things that you would prefer which is very tidy and it's like everybody recognizing you but there's this like supernatural support so there's this like you have guides around you have angels around you and it's like the details of the question are in your emotions they're in three through three on the time whoa the number alignments today yeah um I think the details of the question are tucked away in emotions that you may not want people to know that you're capable of feeling like not capable of feeling but like for example like who wants to have shame on display for other people <laughs> like not many people do right and I know that for myself like I can talk about all of these different experiences that I've had and lessons that I've learned and emotions that I'm I feel but then there's like almost like this private facing side of that that I I want to cultivate like a space that's safe to share this whole other emotional side of me in romantic relationships and in friendships and it's not like you compartmentalize these things but there's certain um, safe spaces that get created um, through containers and I'm almost seeing this cup as like a container right so it's like you have to kind of choose your containers wisely I'm hearing um, and like who are the people around you that are making you feel disconnected from you know the the emotions that are helping you to access this supernatural support now the reason why I say that is not because like emotions are holding you back from that or something along those lines it's because emotions tell you where you're at vibrationally right 444 was just on the time a second ago but like 
when you're feeling a certain way, you have to be in touch with that to know where you are relative like to your frequency and vibration, right? You have to understand that. And we often get feelings confused with verbs or, or states of being. A feeling can be as simple as, you know, I'm feeling really disappointed by X, Y, and Z thing happening. I'm really disappointed that this didn't happen or, you know, like last minute plan changes. Like I'm disappointed that it didn't go as planned, but I know that I have all of these other things accessible to me, right? But the feeling is disappointment. The feeling is disappointment. And when you recognize that, then you can say, oh, well, I know that it's, you know, disappointment is the initial feeling, but when I think about it and you can like tease it into these other things, not because you're manipulating the feeling, but because you're recognizing like, oh, I don't want to feel disappointed because like, is it really worth that much energy? Is it really worth that much of my, my, my emotional space and world? Like, is this, is this worth the reaction that I'm putting into it? Is this, um, you know, aligned with what's important to me? Um, and some things are very much like if, for example, if someone forgot an anniversary, uh, I'd be a bit upset. Like that wouldn't be like not furious, but it certainly would be a bit bigger than disappointment. But that depends on what you value in the relationship too, right? Like I'm thinking of like a 10 year anniversary and someone's like, oh, I forgot. And it's like, well, we've been together for 10 years. Like, how did you forget that? Right? Like those types of things are negotiable. So they change too. And what I'm saying here is the container changes. So remember the, to, um, place the container in the context of, both what you're feeling and where you want to be vibrationally speaking, where you are vibrationally speaking, and also how others may want, um, how you may have gotten your idea of success twisted into what other people are seeing about it, right? Because we love to talk about like emotions, like, you know, <laughs> oh, I did the thing and I'm so proud of myself and all of that, like the, these, um, these emotions that feel more appropriate to face externally, right? Um, so yeah, something to that Taurus, but I think that there's something about your feelings that's being unlocked with this supernatural support. I'm going to dig in more because I feel like I'm doing a chunk of channeling and I really want to give you guidance too. Um, yeah, it's like balancing, right? Balancing what's most important to you. Spirit, can I get some more guidance here from my wonderful Taurians about where their inspiration is hiding? Yeah, you need to you need to let go of uh, what I'm hearing here is the past, like, um, and I think that may be what brings in balance for you. That may be what brings in balance and clarity. <laughs> so, yeah, and movement. Uh, Spirit, can I get some more clarity here for my Taurians relative to their creative inspiration? What does creative inspiration mean to you, Taurus? What does creative inspiration mean to you? Whoa. <clears throat> I'm getting that creative inspiration may mean for you, Taurus, um, parts of your heart being, or parts of your heart or parts of, yeah, like parts of your heart being accessible to you in ways that it wasn't necessarily before. Like what's the truth of what you want and, and love, like what's the truth of those things? Um, and I think that that is almost like, this is like a big lesson, right? This is a big lesson. This is a Saturn lesson, <laughs> And I think that it's coming together for you in really helpful ways. Um, and I think that this is like, it's, I'm getting like, um, I'm hearing planting seeds and that's like probably a literal translation of this card. But when I say planting seeds, it's like you're planting seeds, not just for something to grow, but because you want something to grow. It's like, are you planting annuals or are you planting perennials? right? Are you planting something that you will not need to plant again and that can grow in the same place year over year after you like over, you know, over winter and you do things to tend to the garden to make sure that it sustains, you know, through like sharp cold, you know, really, really um, intense cold snaps or, you know, the ways that uh, snow can fall or ice or things like that over the winter. Like what are you doing to tend to that? And if you're planting annuals, do you expect them to stay? Like, are you sure that you remember that they're annuals? Like, at the end of this season, if you've planted, I think petunias are a good example, very basic, but, um, you know, I think about the herb garden that I had last summer and, uh, I planted parsley and, um, the basil really took off as did the oregano. And for some reason, the sage, so I, it was like yellow sage, um, and parsley 
and um the but the the two of them just like took off completely like by the end of the summer they were probably about the size of this spread here they were massive and I did so little to really tend to them parsley is an annual sage is a perennial the sage will only grow bigger and bigger right um but the parsley, I had to recognize that like, I'm going to have to put the work in again next year if I want the same kind of yield. And I did very little work uh, aside from watering the garden and weeding and things like that. But that basic maintenance, right? Are you planting an annual in your life? Or are you planting a perennial? Because the work that you put in is going to be different for each one. And I think that there's the work that you put in is also equal to the things that you ask for. Because it could also be that you're not asking for what you need because you're afraid of how it's going to make you look, right? Like, there are some days where, you know, this was in, granted, like, pre-pandemic and stuff. But, like, there were some days where I would get to work and I'd be like, you know, people, my, one of my coworkers would say, like, and this is, like, finding safe people to do this with that aren't going to be all weird about it. But, um, you know, one of my coworkers said, like, how are, how are you doing today? And I'm like, you know what? I think the details of the day are not important. I just think that right now I need a hug. <laughs> right now I just need a hug. And like those types of things, um, it's like understanding because you're like, what are you planting? Uh, annuals or perennials, right? It depends on how you, you know, that was like an annual moment. Like that was a, I planted an annual and it was not great. That day was like, it was just awful. Like, you know, I don't even remember the specific details, but I remember that like, you have days where it's just annoying. The day is like annoying and you're like, ugh, I just need contact with another human to know that, um, I uh, like <laughs> that it's okay that this is disappointing to me. Cause there's this like almost this mental energy, the King of Cups, I'm almost seeing it as like partially in reverse, <laughs> like kind of like this. Um, like the King of Cups is not just, um, I, I look at the King of Cups as like a cerebral energy, very mental, intellectualizing emotions and intellectualizing to the detriment of emotions where it's like, I don't really, you know, I, I shouldn't feel this way. I shouldn't feel this way because like, look at all the things that I have here. Look at, look at the way that people see me. I shouldn't feel this, but I do. And like, this isn't going away. Like, you know, ignoring the swords in your heart isn't going to make them disappear. But I think that we need to be honest with ourselves about how we're feeling because it opens up this 10,000 angels, right? Um, lean on your circle of supernatural support, right? It's like this like back and forth. You have to ask. And at so many points in my journey so far, <laughs> like there were parts where I was like, why isn't this working? Then I was like, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't ask, right? Okay. <laughs> like you have to ask for help, but you need to know not just what you want, but like what you want to feel and how you want to feel in order to, to ask for that. So Taurus, you don't have to do it all on your own. Um, I know this is also you in here, right? As like, I'm, I'm an Aquarian sun. So I get it. Like I'm a fixed sign. It's hard for us to, we are stubborn buggers. It's tough for us to ask for help, right? This is Scorpio, uh, Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo. Um, and it's like, it's hard for us to ask for help, but like, there's a truth here that you need to recognize about how that's going to propel you forward. You can put in as much work as you want, but if you're disconnected from the fundamental truth of your emotions that are going to give you mental clarity too, because there's so much space, it's not just about things coming to you easily, but it's about the work itself being easier because you know this, because you know this. I'm going to clarify furthermore here with the Light Seer's Tarot by Chris Ann. I love this deck so much. So much. Whoa. Spirit, can I get some messages here just to add on to this little um, this little bit of guidance that you're offering Taurus for their creative inspiration and both gaining access to it and also making it possible to share with others. Thank you so much. Yeah, five of cups. I feel like you've really got to let go of you. You have to let go of like the disappointments in the past because sometimes disappointments create such a compelling case to or, or of. Well, they create such a compelling case to hang on to what didn't work in the past. Right. But this five of cups energy is really only holding you back. It's really only holding you back. Like there's a whole pathway behind her. There's a whole pathway behind her that she's not taking. The pathway's right there, right? She's not taking that path because she's just kind of looking like all of the, this, uh, don't cry over spilled milk. Keep it in perspective, Taurus, right? Yeah, keep it in perspective. 
Can I get just a bit more guidance here, Spirit, from our wonderful Taurians with this creative inspiration? The way I see this question, too, is like it's almost like a shadow work question where it's like asking for some guidance on that in ways that unlock your creative inspiration and things that are kind of a block to it. So this is really about transmuting energy as well. Yeah, five of pentacles, five of cups, eight of cups, hanged man, ace of swords. That's the ace of swords judgment. Hierophant, holy crap. Okay, Taurus, you just showed up. And like you showed up in such a joyous um, characterization. Like this is such a, a jubilant aspect of you. Um, <clears throat> so we have the five of cups and the five of pentacles. It's kind of like this is, I, I felt the five of pentacles. This is like where you're at, right? Fives are also about change. And I think that this is really about you releasing, like recognizing what no longer fits and releasing it. And I think that this does have a lot to do with your emotions because then the Eight of Cups showed up here, which is, you know, I think about the Eight of Cups in the context of being between the Seven of Cups, um, which is too many options and you're, you're picking the right ones. Like which ones are you just kind of letting go of and you're you know then the nine of cups is a fulfillment so like this is you in that liminal space in between where you're recognizing what's important what's most important to you and what's worth um walking away from but also what you're walking towards right there isn't just this walking away like screw it it's a walking towards and i think that this is the kind of slow burn enlightenment that you've been looking for regarding your creative inspiration and you know love as well um and this is Neptunian energy, so it could have felt like a bit elusive or like you weren't really sure. But then the Ace of Swords is here again. So this is the clarity piece, right? Like the staircase of your mind. It's becoming much clearer to you. There's a light shining through. And I think it's because of knowing what to let go of and what to move towards. Judgment is here. This is also in the the um, the uh, blah, 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 minor, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. The minor arcana version of judgment is, uh, sorry about my stumble there. I don't know. And then I started scatting awkwardly. <laughs> um, but his six of cups and nine of cups is the minor arcana reflection of this card. And I think the eight of cups here tells me, I like, it feels like this is sort of the progression and you're now knowing what's really for you and what's not, what's really for you and what's, what's not. And I think that it's all speaking back to this 10,000 angels, right? Lean on your circle of supernatural support ask for help if you need it no one's gonna know taurus if you don't if you don't say anything right um and that's where i think this is where your wisdom is right the hierophant is kind of like the 3d teacher and the hermit is the 5d teacher and i think that the hierophant card here in this particular iteration is really about you connecting with um wisdom this is like so this is how i'm seeing it is like you're integrating this emotional wisdom that's more public facing and this is like the public facing teacher right the hierophant is like the public facing teacher the hermit is the inward facing teacher my, i don't know if you can hear my cat i just i got back from my granny's um last night and she's uh talking to me but she's also making sure that i'm aware of how she felt while i was away so <laughs> um but this is the sort of public facing teacher, right? And I almost feel like you're integrating this wisdom and it's opening up access so that you can float freely between this 3D and 5D part of yourself. And I think that's what it opens up is like at the top of the staircase, 10,000 angels, right? I don't know if you can see that. Um, 10,000 angels, right, Eva? Yeah, I don't know if you can hear. Um, but this 10,000 angels for support, I think they become accessible to you when you go through this. And sometimes it's just a matter of recognizing that you need help and that like it's okay to ask for it. And there's so many cards here, but I feel like that's the simplicity of the way that this spread is communicating and the way spirit is communicating through this spread for you. Um, yeah, I feel like it's so interesting to me. And I just saw this now. So I have this little, um, ooh, this little healerite heart. Let me just throw it around. Uh, this little healerite. I think it's like serpentine healerite. Um, I love it for the grounding energy that it has. 1919 on the time. And it's, I, I just realized this, but the heart, you can't see it. I have it here um, at the top of what is this spread here. This kind of like articulating it spread for you. And it's almost like this is that like access to your heart, right? Like that grounded opening. Um, and I think once you get out of your head and you stop looking at what, you know, stop looking at what you've invested in and you're kind of like, damn it, 
right? And then <clears throat> when you stop feeling sorry for yourself, which is the five of pentacles, I am sorry to say, dear Taurus, sometimes we fall into this. It's self-pity. Sometimes we need to see ourselves. And when, um, when we need others to validate us in what we're going through, sometimes we have people in our life to do that. And then other times we don't, right? So it can easily slip into self-pity when we don't have someone to stand outside of us and say, yeah, sometimes you can just let it be hard for a day, but a day, like let it be hard for a day. But don't let it take away from your journey so much that you spend a day, like two weeks in the hard, um, if all that you would have needed was a day. And I think that's sort of where this is, that this wisdom is, and it's sort of kind of breaking off on your own. Um, and it could be that the people around you, like the people, you know, the six of wands to me is like public recognition, celebration. It's a victory for sure. Um but it is very like there's to me, this is very ceremonial. It's very tradition entrenched. Um, and I think that um, I think that there's a way that there's a harmonizing of what you want and the contents of your heart. But it all goes back to Taurus. There are so many supports that you cannot see around you right now, but that are absolutely here. 10,000 angels, right? So just remember that when you know what you want, the ace of swords, ace of swords to judgment, that clarity, take your time with it. Take your time with it. Cause this is going to get like, and it may be a process that you're going through now in terms of creative inspiration, um, or moving forward on a project or whatever this means for you. It could, like I said, it could be love as well, or it could be processes around love. Um, and I think this ace of swords is really unlocking um, aspects of knowing what you want, right? This is the knowing um, when when mind meets heart, and then you're able to really call judgment. You're able really you're really able. Ooh, having some issues speaking here. You're really able to move forward, and that that's you stepping into your power with this access um, to that supernatural support open, right? So the channels are clear. So you're clearing the channels, Taurus. That's my, maybe what I'll call this reading, Cl clearing the channels, asking for help and opening your heart. Um, I'm going to pull some extra guidance from the miracles now deck by Gabrielle Bernstein, uh, just for some extra guidance for you here, Taurus. Um, spirit, can I get some extra guidance? My cat's here. I don't know if you can see her. Oh my gosh, the candles. <laughs> okay. Come here, darling. Come here, baby. Yeah, she's like right here, my little potato. Okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, she jumped right up and there's like candles like right here. Um, that would not have been good. Uh, Spirit, can I please get some guidance from my Torians for their where their creative inspiration is hiding? Please and thank you so much. From this Gabrielle Bernstein deck. I dish out compliments sincerely and liberally. That could be something that you, you know, compliments are funny because we often give them, um, we give them to get them a lot of the time. <laughs> At least this is how I found like in a lot of networking scenarios, right? Like you say, oh, I loved this. I love when you did that thing. And like, it seems so inauthentic because then someone's like, oh yeah, well, I love when you did that thing. And then it's like, oh yeah. And then you get into this like out complimenting each other. So just remember to do it sincerely and liberally. And sometimes a compliment can be asking someone for help. Sometimes a compliment can be asking how to do something because it is implicit. It is implied in the question that you trust what they're going to tell you. You trust what guidance they're giving you. You trust, um, you know, their journey and you've seen their journey. And it is one of the highest compliments that you can give is to ask someone for help. Um, so just remember that. <clears throat> Oof, that was interesting. Uh, and then I'm going to pull from the notes from the universe on love and connection deck by Mike Dooley. Uh, so spirit, can I get some extra guidance here for my wonderful Torian creative collective, please? And thank you so much. Ask for help, Taurus. Just ask. You have more options than you realize. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, you do. Also, that's just a beautiful card. Oh, so nice. It sure is hard to get really angry at someone when you can think of all the reasons you love them. And you can, the universe. It sure is hard to get really angry at someone when you can think of all the reasons you love them. Maybe this is energy directed to yourself a little bit. <laughs> and just being patient with yourself through this process, Taurus. 
but also understanding too that like as you go through this we can easily feel we can feel quite impatient with ourselves and the journey and then also how others are contributing to it whether they're making it harder for us to move forward or they or we're moving backwards sometimes right like sometimes the journey is not linear so you're going in this like loop and then you're looping back and you're like oh no 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 not back here thank you and then you're going forward again and then you go back it's just this it's an interesting journey and I think about it like kayaking or canoeing right you're paddling along and sometimes the current kind of makes you slip up a little bit and you end up spinning and you just have to correct a little bit but it doesn't mean that you're not canoeing or kayaking farther or you know it, the, the, the progress doesn't matter right I mean, for me, I just love being outside on the water, so. It's not as if you need anyone. Ooh, Taurus, are you feeling a little bit sensitive about this needing to ask for help? It's not as if you need anyone. For as long as you wish to keep them in your life, whoever they may be, Understanding them as opposed to changing them will wildly improve the chances that they'll wish to keep you in their life. On the other hand, you're pretty much stuck with me. Oh, wow. How I love you. The universe. This is a really great message. I think this is a good reminder that when you ask for help, it's not because you're, you don't, it's not this like codependent need for others. You're asking for help because you are, you know, seeing where they're at you're seeing the wisdom in it so it could just be my dear Taurus that is watching this who this is for whom this is resonating um asking for that help may have been kind of a sign that you were not the expert that you know yourself to be or you were shamed for asking for help but I'm getting again this 10,000 angels and 10,000 angels can be people but that can also be like guides and things like that so talking to your guides being more engaged with them talking to your guardian angels right I have daily um, you know interactions with archangels archangel Michael in particular and Raphael have been particularly important as I've gone through things um, and I like I'm feeling like there's there's angels around you that you don't know and that you can't know until you ask um, and again, don't see asking for help as like taking from somebody because if they, they're not ready to give, they'll tell you, right? If you're used to codependent relationships, it's almost like you have to get permission just to breathe around someone because you're so used to people being dishonest about how they feel or, you know, you're not really sure and all this stuff. And it's like, no, 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 it's okay. Sometimes asking for help is a compliment. And if people aren't able to give, they'll tell you, right? So just trust that too. Trust that too and trust yourself, Taurus, okay? This was a bit longer than what I thought, <laughs> but I had a lot, Spirit had a lot to say here for you, Taurus, so I wanted to run with it. But uh, if this resonates, please like and subscribe. It helps me to grow the channel and continue to do this, which I happen to love to do. Uh, and also, uh, it, you know, allows me to share guidance and to connect with Spirit um, to put that, you know, messages out into the world, which is the more important thing. Let's be real here. Um, so, yeah. And there are other ways that you can connect with me throughout the week and throughout the months. So do continue to check out other videos on here. But if this is where we part, Taurus, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.